Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Creepy Encounter Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. This happened at my work just a few nights ago, and it definitely felt like a case of being in the right place at the right time. I had just gotten back from my break and was on my way back to my workstation when a middle-aged woman stopped me and asked me for help getting into the store's Wi-Fi. After a few minutes of trying to fiddle with it and troubleshoot, we found that her phone was almost completely without service. She reacted to this with a level of distress that seemed to go above and beyond mere frustration over not being able to use an app. I sensed that something serious was going on, so I asked her, If you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you trying to do? Maybe I can help you figure out an alternative. She then informed me that she was in an unsafe situation. She mentioned a psycho who had been trying to follow her and said that she was trying to call a friend of hers for help. Despite the fact that I'm technically only supposed to use it for work-related purposes on the clock, I immediately offered to let her use my phone, and she gratefully accepted. Her friend luckily picked up the call from my phone, and in her conversation with them, I heard her say things like, I accepted help from someone whose intentions turned out to be no good, and now he's after me. I'm at Walmart. I'm scared he's going to come into the store and find me. Please come pick me up as soon as possible. After she hung up, I asked her if her friend was on the way and if she was going to be okay. She said yes, so I made my way back to my workstation after wishing her well. Around 10 minutes later, I saw the woman again passing by my work area, this time with a man. I hoped and prayed that the man was her friend and not her harasser. About another 15 minutes later, the two of them came through my line to check out. I looked for an opportunity to pull the woman aside and discreetly ask her who the man with her was. But before I could do so, an old bald man in a grimy corduroy jumpsuit approached both of them and began very insistently trying to get the woman to go to his car. The man, who I now realized was indeed the woman's friend, stood between the woman and the creep and firmly told him that she would not be going anywhere with him. The creep was persistent and the friend basically had to tell him to screw off before he got the hint and fled. I turned to the woman and spoke up. I take it that that was the guy who was bothering you. Man, he even looked like a creep. Are you okay now? The woman nodded me and thanked me for my help in getting her in touch with her friend. She then turned to her friend and explained, she's the one who helped me by letting me use her phone. Her friend turned to me with a smile and asked, That was you, huh? With your out-of-state number? Well, thank you for helping her. She's a dear friend of mine. I smiled back and assured them both that I was happy to help, and glad that they were both okay. They finished checking out, and I saw them leave the store without any further troubles. I'm glad that I was able to play a part in ensuring her safety. About a year ago, I, a 15-year-old female, started a new job. This job was involved in the food industry, so part of my job was to take orders, make orders, and bring orders out to the customer's car if needed, as well as cleaning and restocking items. On a late Friday night, it was very busy. I was exhausted. An older man had come into the store. He looked to be at least 60. I ask the man what he would like to order. He tells me what he would like, and I write it down. I tell the man that he can prepay and come back and pick up his food, since it may be a bit due to the previous orders. The man pays in advance and leaves. 
I continue to catch up on orders until I finish his. I see the man's truck in the driveway. My co-worker told me to go run it out to him, so that's what I did. Halfway as I'm crossing the driveway, the man steps out of his truck. I still have some things that I need to buy, he said to me. Oh, it's okay, we can get you ringed up, I said back to him. As we both start to walk back inside the building, I feel his hand grip around my waist as he pulls me close and makes me walk with him. He had a pretty tight hold around my arm. Nice try, little girl, he said as soon as he let go of me as we got too close to the glass door of the building. I know this could have ended up way worse than it actually did, but I still felt pretty disgusted after. Please let me know if I have the right to be bothered by this. Around 2007, I, a female in my late 20s at the time, was walking on Canal Street in New York on a Saturday for some reason. It's very crowded on Saturdays. It wasn't so crowded that you were touching people as you walked, but if you lifted your arm out straight in any direction, you would definitely be touching someone. As I walked, two older Asian women walked in front of me, speaking intensely and quickly in another language followed closely by a boy, also Asian, who looked about 11. He seemed to be with the women, but they were so engrossed in their conversation that they barely noticed him. He slid directly in front of me, behind and sort of between the two women. The kid was almost running to keep up, and he looked nervous. The weird part was there was a short white man with his hand on the kid's mid-back the whole time. The kid kept looking nervously behind him at the guy, and the guy's eyes were locked onto this kid. I looked at the guy who was beside me on my left, and without thinking, I said, what are you doing? The second I said this, the guy took off, expressionless but almost running. The kid wedged himself further between the two women, and that was that. I got awful vibes from the guy to the point that I always think about it and wonder what was going on. I got the strong impression that he and the kid didn't know each other at all. My guess is that he was trying to kidnap the kid, but who knows? Hi everyone, I've been thinking about sharing this experience for a while now but never really knew where to share it or even if it was worth sharing. I think on the surface of it, it's probably not that creepy, but it was the first time in my life where I got that, oh, this doesn't feel right feeling in my gut. I was about five years old when this happened, and I'm 31 now, but I remember it as clear as day. For some background, I lived at the time in a small cul-de-sac in England. At the end of our road was a row of shops and often people would park at the end of the road when there was no parking outside the shops. There was a row of terraced houses with a patch of grass outside and on this grass there was a small wall that had a sign on it just saying that it was private parking beyond that point. This day, a friend and I, both five-year-old girls, were sat on this wall facing the end of the road just chatting and people watching. While we were sat there, a red car parks at the end of the road on the right-hand side, probably about 10 meters or so away. A man then gets out of the car. He's slightly older than middle-aged from what I can remember. Immediately, and I mean the same second he gets out of the car, before he even takes a single step, he gets out a camera and takes a photo of us sat on the wall. Now this was the late 90s, so this is just a disposable camera. After that, he starts walking across the road, and as he gets halfway across the road, he stops, takes another photo of us, and then keeps going. As soon as he gets to the pavement on the other side of the road, he again stops, takes another photo, and then he continues walking in the direction of the shops. I remember asking my friend what he was doing, but I can't really remember anything else about what we said. 
I think we just shrugged it off and kept talking about whatever it was that we were talking about before. A little while goes by and the man returns. And then he does it again. He stops on the pavement right before crossing the road and takes a photo of us. Keeps walking. Gets halfway across the road and takes a photo of us. Keeps walking. And then takes a final photo of us right before he gets into his car. At no point during any of this interaction does he say a single word to us. He never asks to take our photo. Never says hello. Waves. Smiles. Nothing. Just completely silent and straight-faced and taking photos. At this point, I think we both get this bad feeling. I for sure do. And I run inside to tell our parents. I didn't even know what it was that I was feeling. Being so young. I just knew that this didn't feel good and that my gut was screaming at me that I needed to tell someone about this. I half expected my parents to tell us that we were being silly, but they looked shocked and immediately called the police. I remember the police coming and telling us this story, and they looked concerned, which again, I didn't expect. I knew it felt wrong, but I also thought that because he just left and didn't do anything, and it wasn't illegal to take photos, that we would be told off for making a fuss of it. Again, I was only five. So even though I knew it felt weird, I didn't know why. I remember the police leaving and saying that they would keep us updated, but I don't remember anything happening after that, which isn't that surprising. I'm sure our description of the man wasn't that good, and we didn't know about getting number plates or anything like that. I have thought of this incident on and off throughout my life as a weird thing that happened. Of course, now as an adult. I understand more why it was really weird that this man was taking photos of really young girls then. Still, I try to rationalize it in my brain. Is it really that creepy? Maybe he just thought it was a nice image. Two girls hanging out in the middle of summer. But even writing that, it feels weird. But of course, nothing ever actually happened to us. I never saw that man again. We weren't kidnapped or worse. So maybe it was innocent. What makes it hard for me to consider it as a slightly weird but innocent encounter is the fact that he never spoke to or even acknowledged us. I think it would be super weird anyway for a random man to ask to take a photo of little girls. But the fact that he didn't say a single thing was weird. Also, I find it so weird that he didn't just take one photo, but like six. Like he was trying to get the perfect shot. It's weird to me that I have no idea what happened to those photos. I'd love your opinion on this. Is it creepy? Or am I just over-exaggerating the situation? Like I said, it ended up perfectly fine. Nobody got hurt. Why do you think this man took the photos? It is the first time I've shared this story outside of family and friends. Can someone please let me know their thoughts on this? So I'm a 31 year old female and I've been living at the same apartment complex for nearly four years. There's a guy who is about 45 or so who lives on the same floor as me and has for the past year or so. He is so awful. I usually don't notice or recognize a lot of people who live there, but I quickly started noticing this guy because of how rude he was. Whenever we would happen to go downstairs in the elevator together in the morning before work, he would just mean mug, and then we would walk out of the glass doors into the parking lot. I would be walking behind him, and he'd let the doors close on me and not hold them open. One day, about six months ago, my fiancé and I walked up behind him, waiting for the elevator, and when he saw us, he was standing in front of us and just shook his head almost in disgust. Keep in mind, my fiancé nor I have ever had a conversation with this man. Then, where things get really strange, about six months ago, I decided to hold the elevator doors open for him when I saw him coming down the hall. 
He told me thank you, and when we got downstairs for the first time ever, he held the doors open for me. The next time, my then fiancé, now husband, saw him in the parking lot. Whenever he saw my now husband with me, he mouthed effing B-word to him as he passed us. But to make things worse, whenever I see him alone in the parking lot, he smiles and smirks at me, and smiles as he walks past me, almost like two people who have a history together, or like we know each other personally. It's so weird. But about a month ago, when he saw my husband and I together once again in the mailroom, he covered his face with his mail. Can someone please explain to me what the heck they think is going on with this man? I took a lot of psychology classes in college, and I can't even explain his behavior. I'm getting strange serial killer vibes, to be honest. Like I said, we have never had a conversation with him. My husband and I are both very friendly people, and I think that I feel like we give off those vibes. So strange. Okay. Recently, I was having some trouble with kids knocking on the door and running. I have severe PTSD, so this was causing me some issues at home. So I was in contact with a police officer in the area who my mother knew. We met up at a coffee shop to discuss what I could do to make myself feel safer. This was going fine until my mother brought up an old story about when our house was broken into. My memory of this is waking up on Christmas and only having one thing because everything else was taken. I was too young to really remember it, but I'm 35 and not one person has spoken to me about it since I was a child. So I always thought that my version was correct, except it really wasn't. What actually happened was my mother woke up in the night having heard a noise. She knew that there were burglaries in the area because my uncle next door had his Christmas present stolen. This is where I must have confused myself. She got up in the dark and went next door to my room to pick me up. I was around two years old and was wide awake, just standing up in my cot wide-eyed. My mother flicked on the lights, and I said something about a man. She was freaking out. We were alone in the house, and when she looked down, she saw little patches of burnt carpet and spent matches. They'd come in through the downstairs, lit matches and just dropped them still lit while they were walking around. She could follow the entire trail from the back of the house to my room, back to the present. I am staring at my mother in the coffee shop, coffee halfway to my face, and she's like, what? I said, I don't recall this. I recall something else. Told her quickly and she was like, oh no, that was uncle. We nearly died in a house fire. And I had an existential crisis right there. Because I've been deathly afraid of fires all my life. To the point of night terrors as a little kid. With no explanation. But now, I get it. This happened to me almost 10 years ago. I was 19, I believe, and I'm a female if that matters. I took the city bus with my boyfriend at the time to drop him off at a job at the end of town. I believe it was 6 a.m. We live in a small town, 40,000 citizens, so bus stops and streets are mostly empty at 6 a.m. He walked in his job and I went back to the bus stop, which I'd have to wait for a while small town problems. I was glad that there was a bench in the glass room area to wait. At least the cold breeze wouldn't hit my face. There's a man approaching, not too old, but a few years older than I was. He entered the waiting area. I start to panic because there's only one entry slash exit. I was cornered. He comes in and asks to use my phone. I tell him that it doesn't work. I use it as an iPod. He tries to reach for it, explaining that he needs to reach a friend, 
and I put it away, and my main focus is to exit the glass shelter, but he stands in my way. The bus arrived, and I was so thankful. I get in, and he runs across the street and enters a building under construction. I mean, breaks in by climbing a balcony and entering by a patio sliding door. I guess I'll add another one from this time frame as well. I had just graduated, and back then there was no marketplace on Facebook. We used Kijiji. I wanted to sell my prom dress, but being young and naive, I posted a picture of myself wearing the red tube dress online. I didn't get very many replies, so when someone reached out to me about possibly buying it, I was happy that I'd make extra bucks. He tells me he wants to get it for his girlfriend and wants to come see it. I say, sure, here's my address. Mistake number two. It's winter here, so it's dark early. He comes around 6 p.m. Mistake number three. I'm home alone. A 5 foot 2, 105 pound alone. And now this stranger is standing inside. He's staring at me. Head to toes several times. I take my phone out in my hand to show him that I'm on my phone texting someone. He just stares, but a weird kind of stare, like predatory. He just keeps saying that he's not sure if it would fit his girlfriend because I'm very petite. At this point, I reach for the family dog, a lab, a friendly lab, but she felt protective. He hands me back the dress because he's not buying it. I felt so uneasy because I was pretty certain that he had no girlfriend to begin with. Last 4th of July, my boyfriend and I went to the river with his friend's family. The river was so packed we could barely find a good spot to set up our little grill and chairs. We stayed for a few hours and had a good time. It wasn't until we were ready to leave that one of the creepiest encounters of my life happened. I don't know what else to call it besides a possible kidnapping or trafficking situation. For context, I live in Arizona. My boyfriend... His friend, his friend's dad, and I were outside packing up one of the cars. His friend's niece sat in the car. My boyfriend's mom and his sister had driven separately and sat in their car beside us. Two men drove up and parked right next to their vehicle. It was already a bit weird that he parked right next to us because there were quite a few available parking spots. The man rolled down his window and I immediately recognized a man who was smiling the biggest smile at me an hour or so earlier, while he was tubing down the river. At first, I didn't think anything of it, but looking back, the smile felt so creepy. The man didn't say anything substantial. He just asked for directions or something and rolled his window back up, and stayed parked next to our friend's mom and sister. We finished packing up and were about to head out. Everyone was sitting in the car at this point, our friend's mom and sister backed up and started to leave, and the two men immediately followed after them. This few-minute time span literally has my eyes watering up. I'm so afraid to think what could have potentially happened. When the two men drove off, a white van parked further back in the parking lot following right after them. At this point, they still had not left the parking lot. My boyfriend's friend told his dad, call mom, and so he did. Everyone was taking the situation seriously. Whether or not it was a dangerous situation is impossible to tell, but I'm glad that we treated it like one. As the friend's dad called his wife, we all stepped out of the car and watched all three vehicles from across the lot. I was terrified they would drive off, especially because reception is so shoddy in the area. Thankfully, they picked up the phone right away. We could see them parked at the edge of the parking lot's exit about to drive off. Our friend's dad just told them to come back. His tone was unusually serious, which only made the situation more anxiety-inducing. When they did a U-turn, so did the two men's car. But I think when the two men saw all of us outside of the car on alert, they decided to leave. Both the two men and the white van left at the same time. Apparently, while the mom and sister were parked, 
The two men tried to speak to them to ask for directions again or something. I don't know exactly what they said either. Part of me doubts anyone would try to pull something on July 4th. Probably one of the busiest days at the river, and one of the days that cops are out the most. But this still is one of the creepiest encounters of my life, and I'm hoping that someone can make more sense of this for me. For context, my teacher was in his late 50s or 60s and was highly respected in the small central California community that I lived in. He was the AP economics teacher at my school. This took place about 15 years ago when I was a senior. I remember several weird experiences with this teacher. One day in class, and I don't know how it was brought up, I'll call him Mr. Smith. But Mr. Smith decided that he was going to give our class a mental exercise. I didn't think anything of it. But then again, I was a pretty innocent and naive teenager at the time. The class went along with it and didn't see an issue with this. I remember him saying that he was also a psychology professor at the local university. So anyways, he told the class to close our eyes and meditate for a few minutes and begin thinking about immersing ourselves in a body of water. He said it's okay if we envision a river, a creek, an ocean, or whatever, but he stressed that it had to be a water that we were imagining ourselves in. So I began letting the thoughts come, and I imagined myself next to a creek bed, throwing rocks into the river. You can stop now. Open your eyes. The exercise was done. He told us to remember our visions, and he said he was going to ask each of us what we imagined. Mind you, this class was split between girls and boys, so each of us goes around, one by one, and tells the class out loud what we thought about. I remember a boy in my class said that he imagined himself in a rushing waterfall. There were girls that mentioned that they were swimming in a lake, fishing at the pond, and so on. My turn came, and I told Mr. Smith, in our class, that I imagined myself next to a small creek. I specifically remember he has this weird grin the entire time each of us were telling him what was on our minds during this exercise. Mr. Smith finally told us why he had the class do the exercise. He said the exercise was to measure our sexuality and our sexual awakening. He said the people who envisioned themselves in large bodies of water had a high drive, while the students who were in a calmer and smaller environments of water hadn't really tapped into themselves yet. The boy who had the vision of being in a waterfall made a joke and the whole class laughed. I just remember thinking it was weird. I looked around at the class and it didn't seem like anyone was uncomfortable. If they were, they didn't voice it or express it. Mr. Creepy also did this thing where he would pick on a student and ask them a very specific question from our economics textbook. If the student didn't give the answer that he liked, he would stare them down for literally what felt like a minute without saying anything. You could feel the tension in the class, and usually the student with the wrong answer would sink down into their seat with humiliation. Anyways, a few months later I approached Mr. Smith after class and asked him what I could do for extra credit. I only took away a few things from this conversation. I remember him telling me, you are incredibly smart, I don't think you need extra credit. Okay, but I still wanted the extra credit. So he then says, I love your shirt. Where did you get it? I was wearing a shirt with a unicorn and a yellow yield sign. So I told him that I bought it at a thrift store called Red Light located in Seattle where I'm from. He has this stupid grin again, and I ask, what is it? Mr. Smith said, Red Light is the name of an adult video site. Did you know anything about that? I immediately left. I later looked up the website and sure enough there was the site that he was referring to. Later on in the semester, Mr. Smith stopped coming to class and we had a substitute for the remainder of the year. I remember other students whispering in class where Mr. Smith had gone and some students were saying that he got in trouble and was being investigated.
I want to preface this by saying that I almost completely forgot about this person and all of these events until I read a comment on this sub where someone had a similar encounter as me and it all came rushing back. Also, this is long and a lot of it is me giving context, so I'm sorry about that. I'm a 23-year-old female and I'm from the UK. From the ages of 9 to 11, I was best friends with this girl that we'll call Sarah. She and I formed a little group at primary school with two other girls that we'll call Lauren and Ellen, but we were each other's best friends first as we lived so close. Sarah lived one street over from me, so I would always sleep over at her house, but she never came over to my house as we were very poor, and I was embarrassed about the state of my house. The sleepovers became a weekly thing, and it was just her and her mom who worked every weekend, so we spent a lot of time in the house alone. It started off odd. She would show me her mom's videos from like the 80s that all included vampires. As a nine-year-old, I had no idea what was going on, and I'd just sit there blankly. She'd always say, doesn't it make you want to do it? And things like that. She would also get out her mom's toys and show them to me and make me hold them, which never really seemed odd to me until I was older, but even at the time I felt uncomfortable. I was a pretty nervous child, and I struggled to make friends, so I'd often go along with whatever she said, just because I felt lucky to have a friend outside of school. She would often make up scary stories, or do mildly creepy things at night like sing patty cake in a babyish voice close to my ear while I was sleeping, or pretend her dolls were alive and wanted to punish me for taking her attention away from them, which creeped me out but never outright concerned me, though my mom was worried that I was having constant nightmares. None of this affected me too much, and so I stayed friends with her. Later that year, I got mauled by a dog. It was a Japanese Akita and had reconstructive surgery on my face. Due to this, I had to take medication at certain times and would be escorted to and from the school office every day by my other friend, Lauren. Because of this, we became best friends and I started sleeping over at hers instead of Sarah's. Sarah didn't like that I was getting a lot of attention due to my fresh scar or that I had replaced her with another friend. So she said that she was pregnant. At 10 complete with tears and plans and everything, including Ellen telling her mom at the end. This went on for months, and as kids, we didn't even question the validity of her claim. At some point, she dropped this, and next, she pretended that she had cancer. I called her out on that one, as I knew a lot about cancer because my auntie had it at the time, which she didn't really like. After that, she started calling me names, stealing my school stuff, made up lies about me, etc., making our other two friends pick me or her. It fluctuated a lot, so sometimes they'd be my friends, other times they'd be hers. During the time, I slept over at Lauren's a lot, and a lot of my stuff went missing. A pink flip phone that I had just gotten as my first phone ever, this was like 2010 by the way, and my DS Lite, which was my prized possession, my mom got involved at this point and demanded that they find it as she knew I'd taken it to the sleepover. In the end, Lauren supposedly found them both smashed up on a road far from where either of us lived and returned them to me completely broken weeks later. Lauren on both Sarah and I got invited to the swimming baths for Lauren's birthday and for once we got along. It was like having my best friend back. Us kids were basically left alone in the pool to mess around for a few hours. An important note here is that I couldn't swim. I still can't. I had chicken pox during school swimming lessons and I'm terrified of water now, so I've not learnt since. Anyway, at one point I was so sick of being stuck in the shallow end like a baby at the age of 11, when all of my friends were swimming in the deep end. Sarah noticed this and came over to me. She offered to piggyback me and swim to the deep end so that I could play with everyone else. I was so happy to be included. I didn't even think about the fact that she didn't regularly like me, or that if she left me I couldn't swim back. 
I just hopped right on and she swam us out. She started mock tipping sideways like she was going to drop me and I cried and begged her to take me back. I was terrified of getting water in my face or going underwater. I still can't go underwater to this day. She just laughed at me and dropped me, dunking me under the water and holding my head there where I struggled and couldn't breathe. I remember struggling and being unable to breathe, but the next thing I knew, a lifeguard had pulled me to the side of the pool and I was choking on air and shaking. I also have horrible reactions to the smell of chlorine and it makes me sneeze and my eyes swell. So I had to be picked up, but everyone told me that it was an accident and just kids messing around. She later told me that it was just a joke. I should learn to swim and stop being a baby, which I guess is true. But still, after that day, I didn't want to be around her anymore. Our friends still flip-flopped between us, some days being her friends and other days being mine. But that was fine. I didn't care anymore. I was sick of her. I avoided her like the plague. Primary school was almost over, and I never had to see her again. Eventually, we all went to secondary school, ages 11 to 16, and we all went to the same one, but my school was categorized into classes, the top being the smartest, and I, Lauren, and Ellen were all in the top classes, and Sarah wasn't. It was a nice buffer, and I got my best friends back as well as making more friends for the first time ever. I completely forgot about her in all honesty. Then one day, as I walked home from school, I passed the corner shop on my way home, and she was there blocking the path, waiting for me. Her school tie was tied around her head like a headband and she was crying. I tried to go around her, and she growled at me and launched herself at me. I was like 4 foot 7 and 80 pounds if that, and she was much larger than me, and I'd never been a fight ever. I had no idea what to do to get her off of me while she clawed at my neck and alternated kneeling on me and elbowing me. I just wanted her off of me. I grabbed the tie wrapped around her head and pulled as hard as I could until she fell to the ground. And with that, she just ran away crying. I remember walking the rest of the way home so confused. What had I even done to her to deserve that? I hadn't even spoken to her in like eight months at that point and she and our other friends were in the same tutor group, and they hadn't mentioned anything to me. I eventually forgot about that. I turned 12 a couple of months later, and the day after my birthday, I walked into school having spent all of my birthday money on new pens. I was excited to show off. I know, I was a weird kid. First lesson of the day begins, and Ellen runs up to me and says, Sarah's brought a knife to school. She showed me in tutor. She said she brought it for you. I kind of laughed out loud at that, assuming that it was a joke of some kind since any sort of weapon brought to our school was grounds for immediate expulsion, and nobody was stupid enough to try that, especially at 12 years old. I think I even made a joke about it probably being a butter knife. She repeated that she was serious, that she'd told the teachers about it and that they had called the police. Again, I didn't believe her. To me, it seemed crazy that they would call the police over a 12-year-old bringing a knife to school. But they did. The police arrived minutes later and that was that. I never saw the knife, but she was immediately expelled. I don't know for sure why me, or what she had planned to do, but she must have told multiple people that she was going to do something to me, because it was an ongoing joke the rest of the time that I was at school. She ended up going to the school that my little sister had just started at, and she apparently also told my sister that it had been for me, but it was just a joke. Side note, my little sister is a year younger, and she is a fighter. At this age, I've still never been in a real fight, and my sister has always fought anyone who badmouthed me. She's a real one. My sister punched her for that, and that was the last that I heard from her until I was 18 years old. I turned 18 and was at university, and then out of the blue I was tagged in an old primary school photo by Sarah. It had the whole class in it, but she only tagged me. I found this odd, but didn't do anything about it, 
and it was my old Facebook account anyways, so I ignored it. A couple of months later, it was Sarah's birthday, and she sent me a message asking if I would come to her birthday party. Mind you, I hadn't spoken to her in six years, and the last time I had, she'd fought me and then brought in a knife. I simply ignored the message and moved on with my life. Later, I saw that she and Lauren had reconnected and were best friends again, which always concerned me, as Lauren and I stayed friends for years, and she knew everything about how Sarah had treated me. But I've never really put much thought into it other than she's likely they were still friends the whole time, and Lauren had stolen my DS and phone because of Sarah, and they'd broken them together. The last time I saw her, I was 19. I was on a date with my boyfriend walking down the street, and I saw her standing at a bus stop. I wasn't really bothered since I'd neither seen or heard anything from her in years, until our eyes met and she grinned and pulled out her phone and started filming me until I was out of sight. I have no idea why she did any of the things she did, and I mostly feel sorry for her based on the way that her life turned out so far. But still... I hope that I never have to see her again. This is my first post ever, so apologies in advance if it doesn't align with the proper format. I stumbled across this subreddit and just felt like I had to share this story after so many years. Almost everyone has a first memory. Mine was the time that I was almost kidnapped in plain sight from a grocery store around age four. For background, I am an only child who was raised by two working parents. Occasionally, a stay-at-home mom down the street would take care of me when I didn't have preschool. Her oldest daughter was my friend and about the same age as me. Her youngest daughter was two years younger than us. We'll call the mom Linda and her daughters Ava, four, and Carla, two. All fake names, by the way. This story takes place around 1999 or 2000 in North Carolina. One day, while I was under Linda's care, we all loaded up in their van to take Ava to dance class. After walking into the dance studio and getting her checked in, Linda told Carla and I that we would be able to go to the grocery store. The grocery store was in the same shopping center as the dance studio, literally two doors down. Linda put Carla in the child's seat in the shopping cart, while I climbed into the part that normally holds your groceries. Upon entering the grocery store, we were stopped by an elderly couple, one male and one female, that kept saying how cute Carla and I were. At first, Linda just nodded and agreed and began to make friendly conversation. She told them that Carla was her daughter and I was just a friend. After this, things became much more sinister. The old lady suddenly started to try and pull me out of the cart, telling Linda that she already had enough children and they wanted a child so badly. Thankfully, I was big for a four-year-old and squirmed around in the cart until she let go of my shirt. Linda was stunned and just tried to pull the cart away from them. I just remember Linda rushing away into the grocery store as the old lady kept shouting, please, we just want a child. I don't entirely remember what the older man was doing during this interaction, but I remember him being there. I also don't remember Linda ever telling a grocery store staff about what happened. I'm sure that she was in shock. I mentioned this incident to my mom within the last few years. She was never told by Linda that anything happened. Anyway, there is a very small chance that I completely misremembered this event. I'm not naive to the plasticity of human memory. However, the overwhelming emotion associated with this event is fear. Also, no one in my family even knew that this happened. Feedback is appreciated. Do you think that I was almost snatched up? Or did I just have a bad case of early 2000s stranger danger?
What is your opinion on this matter? Do you think that it's mental illness or possibly a stalker? We live in an apartment complex in a safe suburb. Our apartment requires a key fob to get into the building, or you must enter a number on a key pad. Only police and mail carriers have the code. My wife went outside at around 10 a.m. to grab a package, and there was a normal-looking, nicely-dressed young guy in his 20s out there next to his bicycle. He asked her if she owned this black car, which she said no. He said this was his and it was stolen. He said that's why he was drugged. Someone stole his apartment and his car. He asked her if she lived on the second floor and she said no. He said that he thinks he lived in one of the apartments at the end of the hallway. We do. She quickly left, closed the door, and went into the apartment. She called me, then went into the hallway down to the second floor of the apartment complex to look out the window, to see if he was out there, and he came down the hallway and approached her. He said, do you know what Johnson, which is my last name, and said, I think that's the guy who stole my apartment. She said she had no idea who that was. He said, are you sure you don't know a Johnson? I saw in the directory, which there is one outside. She said no and said she had to quickly take a call and run into the apartment and lock the door. She called the police. I got there at the same time as them, but he was gone. The police looked around for him and left. They never followed up. Crazy coincidence that he picked my name out of the directory. Almost too much of a coincidence. My wife works in healthcare and feels like maybe he was going through a psychosis episode. What are your thoughts? We recently moved to this area and don't know anyone other than the people we work with. This happened a couple of months ago. I was at a friend's house one night and didn't realize how late it was, around 2 a.m. I loved sleeping in my own bed, so I decided to call an Uber home instead of staying over. My friend lives in a more rural area of town, so it took a while to get an Uber and it was around a 40 minute drive back to my house. Upon getting into the Uber, the first comment he made was telling me how pretty I was. Immediately, red flags started going off in my head. I'm already a very anxious person and I've always been afraid of taking Ubers alone, especially at night, so I was already on edge before the comment was made. I just replied thank you and he started to drive me home. My friend was a boy and I assumed the Uber saw him standing at the doorway before we left because around five minutes into the drive he asked, was that your boyfriend? At this point, my gut feeling tells me that something is wrong. I reply yes and say nothing further. He then proceeds to go on about how lucky my boyfriend was, and again how pretty I was. At this point, I didn't answer. Around 10 minutes into the drive, the Uber driver tells me that he knows a quicker way to get to my house and that we're going to take a detour. I immediately start to panic inside because as an anxious Uber rider, I consistently watch the Uber app on the driver's phone and need to be following the map. Also, this detour seemed to be going deeper into the rural roads versus into the city. I then called my dad, but because it was past 3 a.m. at this point, he didn't answer the phone. I then decide to call 911. The operator answers me right away, and I act like I'm on the phone with my dad on the phone. She immediately sensed that I was unable to tell her the exact situation, but I acted like I was telling my dad that I was in an Uber and would be home soon. She then started to ask me questions about the color of the car by having me simply answer yes or no, the make of the car, my location, etc. She asked if I was in danger and I said I don't know. After telling her my location, she then told me to tell the Uber driver to get on the highway because the detour had taken consisted of more rural roads. Thankfully, we were only around five minutes from the highway and then another 10 minutes to the police station. She told me to tell the Uber driver to drop me off at a house in a neighborhood close to the police station. 
she gave me an exact address and advised that an officer would be waiting there for me to take me home. After politely trying to beg the Uber to change the address, he finally did and continued to go in that direction. I stayed on the phone with the operator until I got to the destination. Sure enough, an officer was waiting a couple of houses down. I got out of the Uber and walked straight towards the car. I'm not sure if I was overreacting about the situation due to my anxiety, especially by calling 911, but the alarms were going off so loud in my head that I genuinely thought that I needed to in that situation. I now only take Uber alone in the daytime and always share my ride with my parents or friends. Please stay safe, everyone. I, a 27-year-old female, work remotely, and I only go into the office once a month and I take the train. In January, when I was going back home from the office, I was walking to the entrance of the train station along with many other people. As I'm generally more alert of my surroundings, I notice the older man walking in front of me with glasses and holding a suitcase, looking like a working professional as well. As this is a newer station, once you entered it, you have to take the escalator down either one or two floors depending on where you're going. I made a mistake by taking an escalator that goes straight down to the lowest floor and should have taken the one that led to one floor lower. So I just waited to reach the platform to take another escalator up a floor. While still going down, I turned around out of habit to check my surroundings and noticed the same older man just two steps behind me. Keep in mind, this is a long escalator with no one else on it. Why is he so close to me? And previously he was in front of me when going to the entrance. I was immediately on high alert, and once I reached the bottom, I noticed this platform has literally zero people. The train must have just left. I fast walked to the escalator to go up, and I saw the man also fast walking behind me. So I just ran up the escalator and thank God, my train actually arrived when I reached the platform, which had a lot of people. I darted inside and looked back, saw the man also rushing to get in the train, so I immediately walked so fast through the crowded train towards the other end and sat down beside a girl. I figured if the man was looking, he couldn't see me through the crowd. I had to get off the train after three stops to change to another train, and the whole way I just kept looking back to make sure the man didn't follow me. I was so terrified. I told my boyfriend and he was glad that I noticed the man quickly. I told my friends as well, and they empathized, but also pointed out that the man might be lost and just followed me because I seem to know where I'm going. While that is possible, I just don't want to take that chance. One time I was in uni and going down the elevator with an old man to the car park to drive to school at around 7 a.m. And when that man came in, I immediately noticed that he didn't press any floor buttons. When I reached my floor and got out, I was relieved at first because he didn't follow me out. But once I was out of the elevator lobby walking by my car, I looked back and saw the man walking towards me. I was immediately terrified and ran to my car got in and locked the doors, and he just stood around the lobby entrance, acting like he was just hanging out there. I had many terrifying encounters like this since college, and recently I'm just so profoundly sad and angry that women have to go through this all the time. I came across a new song called 12 Minute Rock by Bo Anderson and I really just felt like crying at the last part where it's just a lot of girls checking with each other if they've reached home safely, because I do this with my friends. I also had to buy a pocket angel that I keep on my handbag for self-defense, and I hope that I never have to use it. Please, stay safe out there, everyone.
Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope that you enjoy the extra rain at the end. Get a good night's sleep, everyone. And I'll read to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.